Today we're going to be talking about a foreign film from a highly regarded Japanese director named Takashi Kitano. And Takashi Kitano is not a name in the Western sphere that you would probably find familiar. Uh, but he was, at a time, one of the most popular Japanese actors, artists, comedians, and directors. He has a very interesting career trajectory where, in the 1980s, he gains his footing as a comedian as part of a, a duo called the Two Beats. And uh, that is where the name Beat Takashi comes from. Following that, he gets into, he accidentally winds up getting into directing, maybe half accidentally. He's cast in a film called Violent Cop. It launched his directing career, but he was not taken seriously as a director until the film we're gonna be covering today, which is Hanabi. Now, something you should know about Takashi Kitano, the director, is that he has, he's essentially built his entire filmmaking career on Yakuza films. And for those who are uninitiated, the Yakuza is just the, the Japanese mafia. So in Violent Cop, he is a cop taking down members of the Yakuza. He follows that up with Sonatine, where he plays a member of the Yakuza. Following that is a movie called Boiling Point. And Boiling Point feels like an evolved version of Sonatine with slightly more charm to it, but less interesting visuals as a whole. Then we get to Hanabi in 1997. 1997, big year for Takashi Kitano, a man whose comedy career was based around his, his, uh, his cheatings, you know? Uh, he winds up in a scandal because he is cheating on his wife. And around that time, he's releasing this film, Hanabi, which was originally called Kitano Volume 7. And I can only imagine in my head, if he goes ahead and calls this film Kitano Volume 7, what the trajectory of his film career would wind up being as a result of that. Uh, something wildly different. It wouldn't get into Venice. I, get, I, I can almost assure you that. Because things as, as simple as the title, a lot of people don't think that the title means much of anything in general, on films or books, that it's all very secondary. Um, and that couldn't be further from the tr uh, truth. The title is essentially what's going to frame your story that you're, you're, you're trying to tell. I mean, that, that's the purpose of a title on paper, right? But then sometimes you have, uh, and this really actually worked out in the movie's favor, you have instances like Cloverfield, which means nothing. I think J.J. Uh, Abrams, he was just driving by a, a highway or a street or, or what have you that was named Cloverfield. And that's how that movie wound up being titled that. But if it's called, ooh, Gigantic Monster Movie or Godzilla Ripoff Part Part 3, there's there's less intrigue there. It's good to have a an ominous title that will maybe frighten your audience, that will scare your audience. My first feature, I directed my first feature in 1981, and it was called um, <clears throat> Lightbox. In the Lightbox, you know, it was actually a World War II drama. It, I was very fortunate to get this movie where, you know, Universal Pictures said, all right, you're a young up-and-comer. At the time, I was like 19 years old. You're a young up-and-comer. You, you want to handle one subject in particular. You tell me what that subject is. We're going to adapt that to film, and that's, that's going to be your future. And uh, I decided I wanted to do a, a World War II a narrative from the perspective of a, of a German uh, soldier's wife. We got Clancy Brown from Pet Cemetery 2 to play one of the Nazis, the Nazi husband, and the wife was played by a young Kathy Bates. And this movie flopped, this movie tanked. Uh, it was never released. It never came to theaters. There was no red box at the time, so there wasn't even that for an outlet. And uh, it, was, it was a very unfortunate, shameful time in my career. I'm very lucky to be uh, on the comeback trail, as they say, just shy of 51. So uh, Hanabi, Hanabi is, the most mature 
of the Takashi Kitano Yakuza films. It's him at his most reserved. You see where he starts with Violent Cop, and it feels like there's a seed of an idea in that. Uh, but it is not his movie, really. It's not his idea. It's not his script. He was strictly supposed to be the lead actor, and all the indulgences that came afterward were guided by those who had uh, professional experience behind the camera. And so, when he does do Sonatine, there are the more artistic flourishes within that. Uh, he starts to get an eye for composition, and I think he begins to come into his own as a crime director. With Hanabi, and with Boiling Point, which precedes this film, it feels like he's trying to perfect a certain kind of story. These four films, Violent Cop, Sonatine, Boiling Point, and Hanabi, all seem to blend together, where he takes on essentially the same role. He's doing the same movie each time with little tweaks here and there. And then he does something a bit different with this last one that winds up working out to uh, enormous benefit, creatively and uh, generally speaking. So he, by boiling point, he's starting to get the, the formula down that he needs to make a successful Yakuza film. With Hanabi, he knows what he has to do, but then he adds a brand new element to that, which is a romantic angle. There's a love angle to this film. In many ways, it feels like after you've, you've strategically conjured up a way to beat a video game level that you were struggling with, not, not greatly struggling with, you kind of get the hang of it on the first go around, you do it a second time and you're picking up more coins or whatever you're doing. And then by the fourth time, you're taking a leisurely stroll because you know you can just cruise right, you know all the, all the nooks and crannies to what it is that you're navigating. Thank you.